As lightning flashed and storms threatened, acclaimed cellist Yo-Yo Ma held a standing room only audience in rapt attention at the amphitheater in downtown Warren. For a few minutes, a rainbow appeared overhead, signaling to all that the finicky Northeast Ohio weather had no intention of ruining this day for the Mahoning Valley. You have it all. You're connected, naturally. You're connected to the river. You're connected in American history. Ma then took his place in the cello section to perform with the combined orchestra of the Warren Philharmonic and Youngstown Symphony. The performance was the finale to a day of events organized by the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts as part of their Arts Across America initiative. David Rubenstein is the Kennedy Center's chairman. It's our view that if you don't have a very good arts community, you're not likely to hold on to people. It's one thing to have traditional type of jobs, and that's very important. But if you have no symphony, you have no dance, you have no opera, you have no ballet, you have nothing like that, you're not going to really hold on to the kind of people you want to hold on to. After the performance, Rubenstein moderated a panel discussion hosted by the City Club of the Mahoning Valley. Panelists included Barb Ewing, the CEO of the Youngstown Business Incubator, Dr. Lewis Macklin of Holy Trinity Missionary Baptist Church in Youngstown, and William Mullane of the Fine Arts Council of Trumbull County. You know, one of the things that, that is very troubling in schools is that there's been a, a national push to vocationalize the schools. We need to really come to the conclusion that the purpose of public schools is to teach citizenship it's to give you the power to use your enfranchisement when you leave school. Prior to the Warren event, Ma held a private performance for about 40 children at the Mahoning County Juvenile Justice Center in Youngstown. Cameras were not permitted. I just want to say thank you for having us. At noon, Ma took part in a forum at the Butler Institute of American Art on how to develop strategies to enhance the arts. Also in attendance was New York Times columnist David Brooks, who has recently written about the power of localism. Well, the first thing I notice, everybody who's in Congress is miserable and getting nothing accomplished. And then I go see a mayor or a civic leader, and they're all happy, and they're all getting stuff done. Brooks is also the executive director of the Aspen Institute, a nonpartisan educational and policy studies organization in Washington, D.C. And to me what's interesting is how the economics and the social are all mingled. Uh, nobody says, oh, we just have economic problems. You've got economic problems, you've got relationship problems, you've got racial problems, all the problems are one problem. And so it's been interesting to me going around the country is everyone has a mindset of we've got to take the whole person and the whole community and deal with it as one thing, not just a bunch of silos of economics, social relationships, the arts. They're all interrelated. Like Brooks, Kennedy Center President Deborah Rutter is also learning from the experience of the Mahoning Valley. The region is the fourth selected for the Arts Across America project. The research that we have um, gotten about this community is that the arts have been thriving despite all kinds of changes in the community mm -hmm. here and in some ways have been the stalwart, you know, reliable, consistent set of institutions and people through all of the ups and downs and now the regrowth and the resurgence of this community. The event at the Butler was closed to the press, but we were able to speak with several who took part afterward. It was a very powerful meeting uh, with a lot of input from a lot of different resources around the valley. Uh, I think what it drove home was just how many resources there are out there uh, in our community uh, that we haven't really coordinated effectively and aligned up to create these opportunities. So. Uh, from this day forward, that will be our focus and our strategy. We want to look at what is that social fabric, what are the things where we can keep our kids in school longer, where we can make stronger communities, we can have better neighborhoods, we can address some of the social fabric issues that we're seeing across the country. We have Butler, we have McDonough, we have Powers, we have Stanball, we have all these amazing programs and entities, institutions right here in the valley. How do we get our kids connected? How do we keep them connected? One answer was on display Monday morning at Quinby Park in Warren. Today will mark the first of many conversations about what would make the most impact for our young kids here at this park. 
The Trumbull Neighborhood Partnership held a kickoff to the day's events with a celebration of arts and culture. There they unveiled two new public art installations and announced an award of $40,000 in funds from the William Swanston Charitable Foundation for improvements to the park. So their mission is really to encourage active play and movement and reduce obesity rates in, in young children. Um, the park already has uh, some amazing neighborhood shepherds and it needed, it has some play equipment, but it really needed a boost. So this will allow us to work with the park to, to really put together a nice play area for children and encourage more programming and opportunities in the next few years to develop. You can read more in the stories by Dan O'Brien and Jeremy Lydic at businessjournaldaily.com. You can also hear more from David Brooks in today's Three Minutes with Video. 717 Credit Union. Business services designed to meet your daily needs. Commercial loans, business deposits, merchant and payroll services. 717 Credit Union. It's knowing you were treated right every time.